Okay, I hear that. Yep. Okay. And let's just see if that's actually broadcasting. That'd be a great thing to know. Uh, yeah. Oh, there I am. Look at that. That's me right there. Okay, guys. Hi, this is Mark Black. And uh, this is uh, the channel Mark Teaches Music. And I still be Mark Black. And um, let's see what I want to tell you. Uh, so every Wednesday at 7, we have a live uh, YouTube here. And uh, the deal is, is we're uh, talking, answering everybody's questions about Muzak. Uh, yeah, it's time to start. And we're starting. Uh, so anyway, so live questions about all your questions, I should say, about uh, music and um, that I can answer, which will be a lot of them. Not all of them, probably. Uh, but uh, let's see what I want to say here before I start. I need to say that today is the uh, 27th day of uh, July. This is the 10th episode of Mark Teaches Music. And 10th episode, sorry, 10th episode of To Play and Sing. That's uh, uh, what this is about, this particular one. And uh, so uh, so we can ask her questions about, just by the way, about being in choir, being in bands, being uh, in... Uh, seriously orchestras and uh, uh, marching bands as well as rock bands and jazz bands and things like that uh, so uh, so I want you to jump right in and send me your questions and um, you know and put your questions in and I'll answer them and I have you know some questions here also or I should say already and um, so so if you like this you need to subscribe you need to hit you know um, I love you you know, subscribe, click the bell, all those things, and um, and that's what we're gonna do. So we're we're starting on the first question now, and the first question is, how do you figure out what scale to play for ad libbing? And I was ad libbing on the flout uh, just a moment ago, and um, I didn't remember this was I I knew this question was in here somewhere. I didn't remember it was the first one. So um, and uh, there's, there's again we talked about this last week. And forever, there's people who are you reading notes, or you're reading chords. This is a similar thing where you're reading notes, you're reading chords. You ain't reading nothing. You're just making sounds. So, um, well, we can use this example here as a uh, yeah, still playing. Uh, we can use this as an example here of um, of uh, so if you're playing by ear, I'm not trying to sound silly, uh, but um, your ears telling you where the notes notes are wrong. So um, this particular example, let me just grab another example that stays in, in one key. So um, we have talked about it at different times. Um, let's say the key, key of C. The key of C has you know C D E F G A B C. Those are the notes, and you take those notes and you build chords and thirds. C E G B uh, D F A uh, E G B F A C G you know, like that. Uh, you get a predictable set of chords. So in the key of C, if you had a C, an F, a G, an, a D minor, an A minor, an E minor, all those chords would still only use your friendly C scale. So you wouldn't have to change chords just because you played uh, this, um, had uh, uh, the, the chord change. The, the song, the key of the song doesn't necessarily change just because the chord changes. Uh, so looking at, I'm just trying to pull up a little example here real quick. I think I have one. I have a bunch. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid the copyright monsters who hate everybody. So maybe the this would have got it claimed or whatever, or you know I don't know what the word is, but uh, this is supposed to be A minor. So what I want you to hear about this is. <laughs> you hear that? Okay, everything's going along, flowing along, flowing along. Right here, see, hear that? Normal. Whatever key we're in, this should be playing by ear. Okay, now just I'm saying this actually as a as a, uh, a lifeline or everybody to be happier is that so this is an A minor, but for every minor key, there's a major key that has exactly the same notes. So that means that. Uh, or certainly as a starting place. So A minor is the same as the key of C. So I can play the C scale, uh, except you hear that weird, weird place. It's coming on. Let's play it again. Let's listen right here. Right 
here. Right there. You hear that? They're doing something, right? To make it exciting. I'm very for that part. But so up until that part, I can play this uh, C major scale, like like in band. So I'm playing like in band. We'll play just like that. I really am. Here, not start yet. C major scale. This is by ear. How do you decide what skills to play by ear? You say I'm just playing notes. Now, so when we get to this, so basically I'm saying, how do you, how do you decide what scales to play? Um, you play a scale, and uh, you're listening to the chords, and you say, well, huh, this all sounds normal. And if the whole thing sounds normal, like uh, Brown Eyed Girl by, what's his face? Uh, um, hey, where'd it go? That guy. All that song is in uh, the same key. It starts out in the key, it stays in that key. So I think it's in the key G. So you could use the G scale all the way through. If you heard an unusual sound, okay, then you'd be like, oh, I bet the change of scales there, and that would include you're playing a note in the said key. Let's say the key of C. And you got to that, and you got to a note, and you play the F, and the F center right, you play the F sharp center right. Well, it's changed. Now, that point here is that that is predictable. It's not just randomly one time it's F, next time it's F sharp. No, it's at that unusual sound. So you're listening for that unusual sound. Now, if you are a note reader, uh, why are you trying to ad lib anyway? No, I'm kidding. If you're a note reader, uh, you're you're if you're reading notes to ad lib, I'm talking about reading uh, ad lib written part. You're not ad libbing. You're not improvising. You're you're uh, just replicating what you already know. So or what you can see. So that's not what we're really trying to do. Uh, so here you are. You're looking at hopefully the best thing would be um, the scale, and you're looking at the chords, and um, you can learn. And it's not like a hard thing to do. Uh, but uh, what chords are in a key? And it's a predictable pattern. It's called the normative chords when I was in school. Now it's called, uh, or, or I suppose it maybe at the time it's called the diatonic chords. It just means the chords using the notes of the key. And they are, and actually there's a question in here that will uh, impinge upon this in a moment. We'll get to it. Um, and that is the chord built on the first note of the scale is a major chord, and the chord built on the second uh, note of the scale is a minor chord, so you have a little short finger or minor. And the chord built on the third note of the scale is a a minor, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, <laughs> minor six, and diminished seven. So let's take the notes of the C scale for all of you non reading people. And uh, so the point is we'd have C major, that's the one chord first note. Then we'd have D minor, the second note, a D, but a minor, and make that a minor chord. E minor, uh, the third note, it's a minor chord. The fourth note is an F. We're just going up the alphabet, right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And we're just going up the alphabet. So here we are on the F chord, the fourth note, C, D, E, F. The fourth chord is a major chord. The five chords of G is a major chord, G major. And the uh, uh, sixth chord, sixth note is an A, and you build a minor chord on that. And then if we had a B, it would be a B uh, diminished. So again, again, that list in every key is major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, and diminished seven. So you're looking at a chart and you're saying, huh, you know, these chords are following first the notes of whatever scale, the D scale, the C scale. You can, I can send you, you know, if you're not a student or if you are a student, I can send you a list of the scales and you can look them up uh, online, you know, uh, either one. But So the point, you're looking at the notes of the scales and you're going, hey, you know, look, look, uh, this is in the key of D and the third note of the key of D is an F sharp. And look, there's an F sharp minor, there's a D, an F sharp minor, there's a G, and there's a B minor, and there's A, and you're, you're going through that list that we just said, and you're like, hey, you know, this is just the D scale. This is the D scale. Every single one of these chords is built on that scale. Um, and that would be the beginning of, oh, well, if not 95%, depends on how picky you want to be about it. So uh, every, every tonal scale, or tonal song, which is uh, most songs that people actually listen to, uh, has to have a key center. We have to have a place to say, this is home base. And then we have a place later on, we say, well, we've escaped home base. You know, it was unusual, it was a weird place or a, a challenging place. So, um, and that's not because it's better, it, 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 we, but we have to have a home, and so that's the key we're in. And so we have to have enough notes in that key for it to sound like we got home. Uh, and that would in turn mean 
uh, that it's in the key of D, and it's got this place right here. It uses a C note, which is not in the key of D, or uses a C chord, which is not in the key of D. Uh, and I'd have to change my scale there. So predominantly playing in a key, listen, listen. And when you hear this thing that is different, that's the chord, you're just listening. Hmm, right there's a very interesting sound right there. And including on a guitar, it doesn't matter. Um, the scales are the, are the same C scale as on the guitar and on the piano and on the um, ocarina and uh, on everything. It's not a different scale. Um, so you're listening to the chords maybe before you play the song or while you're playing the song, but before maybe better. And you hear that's an unusual place there. Now you're saying, I think this is in the key of C. So you're playing the C scale over the comfortable, seemingly in innocuous places. And listen, all those notes work even though the chords are changing. Wow. You know, or you come to a place and go right here, you know, the uh, again, the, the, the F doesn't work, F sharp works, okay. And all I'm telling you to do is that's going to be consistent. When you get to that place, it's going to be the notes of the C scale with an F sharp instead of an F. Guess what key this is? That's a G, key of G. So for some reason, because of the chord, you know, right here's the key of G. And uh, now, of course, the depending on the kind of music you like, I mean, man, it can blow that out of the water like 20 times more difficult than that. So I'm not saying that, wow, we've solved all our problems. I said we've started solving all our problems. And depending on the kind of music you like, that may be uh, what you need to learn. I mean, that's all you need to learn, or, or a huge beginning. Uh, you do not have to change uh, scales per chord uh, if those chords are in the same key. And um, that's very uh, find-outable. And I can, I'll can i send you that if you ask me for it. There's got to be a cup of coffee right here. There it is, right there, cup of coffee. Okay. Um, now, how can I learn to play faster lead? Lead. Okay. So we're talking about um, guitar, mandolin, ukulele. Uh, you could call bass, um, bass tech solos, um, single note in general is what we're talking about. Not exclusively, but a single note in general. So uh, let me just give a couple of things. Uh, number one is you need to... So number one is you need to alternate your picking. Now I'm going to bring this guitar up here and you can hardly see it. And that just means as I'm playing a scale, oh shoot, I don't think I can get this camera activated quickly enough to do us any good. Let's just see. I was not planning on playing guitar because I don't look at these questions, right? So let's see. We'll just see. Here, I'm just give it a second. If, if, it, if it doesn't come on, we'll just give it up. Oh, it did come on. And this is adequate. It's not amazing. Oh, that's me being cool if you're wondering and let's put me down here and here I am and here's a guitar okay so uh, so what I'm saying is is like talking about your right hand which I'm going to put what up here so we play a scale and instead of going beautiful uh, I better unmute that <laughs> I wasn't expecting that either. So look at this hand, my right hand. So I'm, instead of going... So that was all downstroke. So I can play every time... Look, I go down, and I'm going down again. Watch. Down, down. Look at my pick hand. Down. Every time I go down again, I have to go up to do another, another downstroke. It's actually down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So I'm wasting half of my strokes. So it would be twice as fast. If, look, look at this.
So many, many, many of you, depending on where you are, let's just say you're beginner or beginnish, uh, and many of you are. Um, the point is just just adding uh, alternate picking would immediately double your speed. Now, when you get in the upper ends of that of playing lead, you may want to look into things like um, economy picking, which or uh, which just means that you're going directly to the next string that has a sound as opposed to trying to alternate. To begin with, probably alternating is the quickest thing that you can get going. So alternate your picking on your lead playing. Now, a couple of other things, and this is a big deal. So let's just say I'm gonna play, let's, let's play the third. You don't, just a pattern, here's another pattern. Now what your hand wants to do is your left hand. Now, your left hand wants to do this. It's like a gang or like a bunch of little ducks and so it wants to go like okay, this guy's playing a note so his gang comes with him and then this guy's playing a note and all the gang comes with him and so they're kind of running back and forth and they're they're running and so you're either doing this waddling or you're doing this and having to stretch out to here and then you play this note, and then you do this and you have to stretch out to here so what you need to work on doing is stretching your fingers out to where they're sitting directly over the frets you're using. So instead of having to reach for a string or reach, I just have to go down. That's all I have to do. So I just have to move a quarter of an inch. And that's a, that's another thing that makes this these two things I just said are very good uh, standard uh, technique things, skill things. Now, the second thing I'm going to say is the evil thing. No, 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 I'm kidding. Uh, the next thing I'm saying is just that um, we can, as this is a not controversial at all, but uh, we can hammer those. If you pick once, and watch, here's my, my right hand, pick once, and I just slam this finger down. Watch this hand again, the right hand. So I just picked once for two notes. So I'm saying that's, an, that's another way when you're trying to play something really fast. Like that, you're trying to play really fast. You notice I'm just picking. I'm just picking once for three notes in this case. Pick, 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 pick. So... That's another thing to go faster. Uh, it depends on the kind of music you play as to whether you would be able to use that a lot. So you wouldn't use that a lot in bluegrass, for example. I mean, you, you, you use it a lot, but not near as much. Uh, you'd use it a lot in metal. You'd use it, uh, depending, well, I won't go into all the things. But the point is, that's, there's three things. So the first thing I said was um, to uh, use alternate picking. And this is, again, you as a, a beginner, intermediate. <laughs> A little track to play so it doesn't seem like I'm just A minor. Now that's just the first major pattern. My point was, um, besides getting carried away, is that I was alternating most of those. And then number two, I said, spread your fingers out so you just go down instead of they're all together and they'll have to reach for this and have to reach for that. Because if look, this guy has got to go an inch to play a note, and this guy just has to play a quarter of an inch. So he's much faster. And then the last thing I said was hammers. The opposite is pull-offs. We'll just talk about hammers right now. But again, just this. Opposite. No, I don't want to talk about them now. Anyway, those are the three things that will make your uh, lead playing faster. There's a lot of other things. Um, again, I won't talk about advanced techniques either. All right, so that was that question. How do you play lead faster? All right, now let's see. How can you learn to sing better? <laughs> um okay oh i've got to get a better picture it's not the right picture there look i'm back 
Okay, how do you how do you uh, learn to sing better? Um, well, um, there's always the P word. I, I don't know if we did we do this already uh, two or three weeks ago. Anyway, uh, there's always the P word practice. Um, one of the things, uh, and I think I did use this already, but it's okay. People ask this all the time. Uh, so here, uh, just to make a statement, um, you really need to practice because all of music is all of music is about skill. And some people are naturally skillful. They don't have to work very much or as much to get a great sound or a great lick or lots of speed. I don't mean they're lazy or anything like that. I just mean in certain areas they're, they're very gifted. They're already like halfway there and you have to work two years to get there or five years. You know, They're already there and then they're working on beyond that. Uh, but for most people, that skill that is needed comes by repetition. And repetition is also known as practice. So, um, but if you're not going to practice or you're not practicing enough or you can't find enough time to practice, here's a great idea. Uh, and that is every time you sing, sing with all your heart, sing with all your, like sing the greatest you ever sang. So, uh, and that really would mean to go, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, and you're singing along in some other song and you're listening to um, Sugar, the song Sugar by uh, Maroon 5. And so you don't go, Sugar, yes, be only down on me. Not, not doing like that, you're going, you're going, this is in your bathroom or your car. You go, sugar, yes, please, won't you come? You sing it as good as you can and as amazing as you can. And with uh, crescendos and um, decrescendos and good breath support and everything you're supposed to be practicing, but you're not really practicing. And if you'll do that, uh, it won't absolutely make up for practicing but what it does and the reason we're practicing anyway is to develop a habit I've done this many times and you developed a habit now I normally my default just turn me on how am I singing I'm singing aggressively I'm singing full strong these good words and uh, it's you know uh, so then when I say I'm really singing now I'm singing at the karaoke club I'm singing in a performance I'm singing in a recital whatever uh, my habit of singing is not, let me sing this six times and the last time I'll do it well, but my habit is, man, you know, immediately I will do it well. So that's a, that's a short one thing answer. Uh, how do you learn to sing better? Okay, this is broad question day. Uh, the three most efficient practice habits. Okay. Um, efficient. Now that word is changing my answer. So if it's just practice habits, things you need to do to practice, the three best things, um, I would answer differently. But, but to make them efficient, efficient, get the most out. Well, look, a lot of people can't or don't want to do this. Those of you, he who has his ears to hear, let him hear. So it would be really good for you if you went in with a plan on what to practice and approximately, if not exactly, how long you're going to practice it and the way you were going to practice it. I'm going to do this exercise, these exercises, or I'm going to start with, I'm going to play 20 minutes on my song, or I'm going to ad lib for 30 minutes, uh, whatever you're going to do, a plan, and you stick to the plan. Because what you'll do if you don't, you will inject, um, say, about 30% of doodling, noodling, nothing. Uh, in your practice and you didn't do anything except kind of stare off into space and kind of think about boy I wish I was you know Eric Clapton you know <laughs> so so efficient the three efficient habits uh, and one would be figure out what you're going to do beforehand you know and it would do you good to write down you know you know have a flow chart or not a flow chart I mean a chart and be like I'm supposed to do this and I did it or, or you look back and go it's been Two, it's been three days since I played my scales. No wonder I'm having trouble moving my fingers. Or you could say it's then I'm not, it's everyone's all over the place on these things. Uh, you could say it's been three days, four days since I ad libbed, or it's been four days since I played my song, you know, and uh, really played it well. So, what I'm getting at is that you're, you're, 
you have a plan and you stick to the plan and you're trying to minimize time. You make a copy of that song you're supposed to play or you have the book right there with you as you're, you know, open, you know, you have a folder. These are just thinking you know, all my stuff in there, open it up, there it is, boom, I'm playing, tracks ready. You know, so it's like a, that's a time efficiency thing. Um, let's see, a second thing about uh, efficient practice, what would that be? Well, now listen, it's, it really is, if we could, did you know that uh, historically, say 500, I'm not kidding, 500 years ago, uh, like if you were going to be a singer, you know, uh, for, the, for the church or whatever, and uh, not, that, not, not your little slave, I just mean it like, you know, your dad wants you to sing in the church and everybody's like, oh, it's so wonderful, you're going to sing in the church with us. Uh, so you might take lessons for one to five years before they ever let you sing a song. You know, but you would not sing a song until you'd done all these exercises and practiced, you know, three hours a day, and you could make these perfect tones and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not belittling that. What I want you to notice is that that assumes a level of, uh, at, of attention and concentration, and uh, he's going to do this. You know, he's... Uh, He's uh, eight now, and when he is 13, he's going to start to sing his first song. It's going to be amazing, and he's going to keep going. He's going to be in the choir. He's going to be, you know, like this. And um, I'm not uh, saying that necessarily we should do that. If we knew that you were going to, you knew that you were going to stick it out or your kid was going to stick it out or whatever, then the best thing to do, talking about efficient habits, would be to play your exercises, sing your exercises, play your exercises, scales, arpeggios, chords, different things that you have to do that make you better. You would do your music theory, learning, ear training. So this fundamental, foundational ear training and theory is like, I understand what I'm doing. This is saving me time. This is saving me years of work because I know that the key of D minor is just like the P of D. I don't have to learn a new scale. Or I can take the D scale and just raise the um, A to an A sharp. And what do you know? I've got a uh, harmonic uh, B harmonic minor like because I understand how music works music theory uh, my ear can hear the root my ear can hear the per progression I play these exercises I play these skills my fingers do what I want work for me finger and it goes yes sir and it runs off and plays what I want uh, and you do that for half your time and then you play songs and uh, depending on what you want to do you would get through all the things you want to do like I want to play this really hard piece and I want to ad lib and I want to learn some cool licks you know and I get to that bang, bang, bang every day, and I do all the theory every day. So that would be the perfect, the most chugga, 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 you getting really good really quick because everything that's necessary for being really good is occurring. Now, you are a human being, I'm a human being, uh, and we have problems. We have, you know, uh, you have to go to the doctor, your mom has to go to the doctor, you know, you have to whatever, you're a lazy bum and you're a bum for three days and you kind of wake up, oh, I, I, I'm supposed to play my music. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter the reason. So we have things to get in the way. And um, as close as you can get to, not as a burden, because we, what are my point of that about us having, about the, your lazy bum, is uh, we have things we have to manage, including our attitude. And, and that's you managing your attitude. I have to manage my attitude. Like, you know, why well, go on? You know, um, so we all have to manage things like that, uh, and um, if we can, if you can come back to the systematic practicing and laying in pieces, that is an efficient habit. That takes a little more attitude to a little bit more. That kid, I'm going to study for five years before I ever sing a song. Whether you can do that or not is another story, but that's a very good thing. And the last thing, efficient habit is. the metronome if you want to practice if you want to get five to ten percent more out of your practice the same 15 minutes use the freaking metronome the metron is not my fault I'm sorry you don't like the metronome it's time for me to do something I think I'm supposed to do composition so that was me writing uh, so if you want to get more out of your practice five to ten percent more out of the same 15, 30 minutes, use the freaking metronome. Uh, and if you're, if the metronome's beeping and you're not with it, the problem is you, you are the problem. So what I'm saying is you can't say, I can't play with the metronome. Yeah, that's right. You need to slow the metronome down until it gets to a speed that you can play with it. 
and um, it will it'll save you. You look at it; it's going to save you in. Uh, yeah, we'll say it this way: in five years, it's going to save you six months, or you could say in a year, I'm going to get an extra six weeks progress out of a year. Another guy beside me did not use the metronome. We practice the same things in the same amount, and in a year, I am six weeks ahead of him. Uh, you know, and that's pretty valuable. Uh, so, and not saying that's pleasant, but it is true. It's so true. Yes, we should all love the metronome as our friend. Okay, why is learning the Nashville numbering system so great? Okay, well, uh, the Nashville number sy numbering system is all right. It is not amazing, and it is not comprehensive. So, back in the day, the uh, primary singer... You can look this up on YouTube. It's true. Um, the uh, it was the Jordanaires was his backup band, and um, they um, did songs, all kind of songs. Is my point? Constantly changing songs, and um, so so they wanted to um, figure out a method that they could play many different songs, sing many different songs with their harmonies and stuff without figuring out the notes and everything, something that's more flexible for them to record more quickly. Okay, and then the main guy was a, uh, had gone to, I think, the University of Florida for um, two years, and he learned music theory. And uh, so Nashville numbering is this, and we just were, whoa, look at people. This is like if we, if we were in the key of C, a song, <laughs> They went to the A minor, and then it went to a G, and then it went to a C. Okay, so Nashville numbering is just that if we're in the C, letter names. Uh, let's let's go back here. Let's see if I can put my beautiful face up here somewhere. Where is my beautiful face? It's coming. There it is. I'm gonna put me a C over here. Yeah, that's gonna work. Okay. So anyway, so uh, so the song goes on and on and on. C and your letter names, right? C D E F. C D E F. This is the fourth chord, so he would write the number four. This is the Jordan Ayers guy who went to music school, and uh, and then you go da 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 fourth note and the fifth note, because that's the fifth note. C D E F G. It's the fifth note. One two three four five, and then we go to a six, the sixth note, and he'd write a little M. Or you'd write a dash, meaning a minor. This is Nashville numbering. And then you'd write a five. And then you'd write one again. Arabic numerals, one and all. Now, in music school, because it's more better, you would take the same analysis and you would say, this is in the key of C. And you'd use Roman numerals. And you'd use this. And this, the reason you would do this, I'm going to come to in a second. Because what up above... It only tells us how to play. You know, if I'm in the key of, so in the key of D, let's just put this in the key of E. So if this is the key of E, so what, what, would, the, what would the four chord be? E, F, G, A. The four chord would be an A. And if in the five chord, E, F, G, A, B. This would be a B. The same song, same song. It's the same song. Let's get this, so hard to do this with the mouse. And then the sixth chord would be A, B, C, D, I'm sorry. E, F, G, A, B, C, and it does happen to be a C sharp. C sharp minor, see that's, they're both minors, the same kinds of chords, G, major, major, minor, minor. Then back to the five, which would be a B again, and back to our E. Same progression, same song. Uh, so, in uh, classical analysis, this would be, we would using Roman numerals. Now what this does, Roman numerals, is, is the way to do this. That's because when we have, uh, let's just say, right here instead of this, um, let's say instead of this B, we have, um, yeah, instead of this B, it's gone now, we have an F sharp. Wow, that's ugly. That's going to be really ugly. Okay. Yeah, we have an F sharp. No, sorry, I meant G sharp. G sharp. C. 
7. Okay, now in Nashville numbering, what you would do is you would call this a, um, you would call this, uh, this the, it's over uh, in the key of, oh, I got it, sorry, got to change it in both keys. Okay, let me hurry up, run over there and do that. Okay, so we got to change it in both of these keys. So in uh, the A minor, that's going to be an E. In the key of C, that we're changing this to an E, and in the key of E, that would be a G sharp. So let's we'll play in the key of a, a C to make it simple. But the point is this this in oh my gosh yeah well I guess I should prepare more huh so no this is supposed to be spontaneous so anyway instead of that chord what we have is an E an E going to A minor and uh, so if in natural numbering here's an E this would just be called a three. It's the third note of the scale, C, D, E, in the key of E, E, F, G. It's just the three, and they might put a little seven on it. That's fine. In, uh, and again, this method is just telling you how to play. It's not explaining anything about the music or getting you to draw any conclusions about the music. It's just like, hey, do this, fool. Uh, and in this, in classical analysis, what we would call this, and this, don't, don't be taken aback by this you can learn all this stuff but what we would call that chord there is a five of we would call it the whoa look at that that's really weird no, let's get that did it do it five yeah so we would call it the five of that slash meaning of five of six and what that would tell me is that this next chord this e it's it it is the five of a minor. This chord is going to an A minor. This G sharp seven is going to a C sharp minor. And now I understand the function of the song. And I can look at I can for example I can see that uh, E seven. I can say hey man that's that's going to go to an A. I hadn't even heard the song in my entire life. But it's going to do. It. So here it is in the key of C. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, that's wrong. Let's do that. That's fine. It was a G. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was C, F, G, A minor, and G and C. Now we got a C and an F and an E. There's the A minor, G, and C. So this uh, one more time. Here's the F. Here's the E seven. That is pointing towards this sound. And so the uh, normative chord analysis or diatonic chord analysis down the bottom uh, shows us uh, what's happening in the song. Okay, now, what do both of these give us? Both of these give us that a fundamental understanding of the songs to where we realize these 1,700 songs are really just the same song. And uh, I can play a hundred songs, like for example, uh, boom, it's another to key the sunrise bomb slowly, slowly across the bah, E minor D G. And then I'd say, okay, that's the one, that's the five. This is the minor six, six note G A B C D E minor and that's the five and that's the one again and so i can say oh and if we want to do nashville one the roman uh, arabic numeral five oops six with the dash five one again so anyway so the point is that, so here bum dun 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 da chord and i'm not playing the chords i'll do it look i was in the wrong key but i still know my ears still going. Mm -hmm. What's that sound going to be? Bum. So, for example, I can train my ear because I know one five. I can hear man a, a million songs go one to five. So I know what that sounds like. Whether it's going G to D or A to E or B flat to F or uh, F to C, it's the same progression from the first note of the scale chord built on it to the uh, fifth note of the scale chord built on it. Okay. So what uh, Nashville numbering does in uh, classical analysis does better is uh, reduces a song into its basic components to where you can 
change. You can put this song, I just, just like did. I said, hey, you know, this song's too low and see, I can't sing it. Let's do it in E. And then just move everything up. It, but it's still one, four, three, six, five, one in Nashville and one, four, five, six, six, five, one in uh, classical analysis. Meaning I can put that in any key. And uh, also, this is the this is the the key to unlocking your ear to where you hear ba ba like that sound. Da, 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 da. So if I'm playing singing, I'm playing a let's say let's say an F seven ba five chord. Ba, I know that's gonna go one two three four. That's five going to one. Okay, I'm gonna quit talking about that now. That's a I, I broke my rule that I was trying not to break. Oh, but uh, it was taking too long. That was way too long on that. Oh my gosh, I've only got time for one more question. Oh no. Sorry. Darn you, Nashville numbering system. Uh, okay, so here's my last question. Where is it? How do you learn to play by ear? <laughs> well, it's kind of a related question, you know. Uh, so, first off, um, you should sit on a, um, with your instrument, uh, if you're a vocalist, uh, musictheory.net and many other places have a little keyboard, you know, on your phone. So you, you get that and you play a note. This is this is brief. You play notes and you see if you can sing. Try to learn to sing ba up a half step ba 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 and without hearing it first. So I'm playing this note ba. Okay, here up half step ba and played it right ba ba. And then you do the same thing for going down. Ba, 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 ba. So you get to where you can hear the half steps. And you can do this all, uh, you may can do this in a day. I'm just saying, so you don't have to, this progression doesn't have to be a lengthy one. And then uh, musictheory.net, which is a good site. Um, now we need to be able to hear the difference between major and minor chords. So this sounds happy and whole. It is a major chord. Here's its minor uh, companion sounds sad or dark. Here's now I'm switching kinds of chords. That's a major chord. That's a major chord. That's a minor chord. That's a minor chord. That's a major chord. That's a major chord. So um, to where you can hear those, just just cold and what is that chord now you would do that go to musictheory.net click exercises go to the bottom click I think it says core uh, it's on the bottom it says chord um, training or something and um, the reason this is a, you need to do it this exact way is only because um, you anybody has a hard time uh, you know, you're playing the guitar or the piano or the ukulele, it's hard to, to trick yourself. Oh, I don't know what chord that is. Who knows? I don't know. So it's really hard to work your ear when you know you're playing a major chord or you know you're playing a minor chord. So musictheory.net uh, and then exercises and on the bottom it says chord ear training. I'm clicking that and I'm going to set that. It's got a little gear and I'm going to just choose major and minor. Just get uncheck everything except major and minor. And now it's just going to play these chords for me. Major and minor chords. And so I'm going to say dude. So that sounds sad. It's a minor chord. I'm, and let's dig it. Yeah. And I click it. Minor. That sounds sad. It's a minor chord. That sounds happy. It's a major chord. That sounds happy. It's a major chord. That's a minor chord. That's a minor chord. Major chord, minor chord, and you just you make mistakes and you don't understand and all like that and you can't make it work, but that's okay. You just keep doing it and you'll get better and better at it. Then, whether you know what chord you're playing or not, you play a chord. I'm just gonna play this chord. Doesn't matter if it's a major chord, minor chord. Sing the root, sing the anchor of this chord, and the anchor of this chord is not. Ba, that's one of the notes, but it's not the anchor. Ba, and here's another note in it. Ba, listen to my, my voice. Ba, ba, but the anchor is. Ba, listen to me without the piano. Ba, 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 that note sounds like the anchor. Now the reason it is the anchor is called the root. 
It's what the court is built on. The reason it works uh, and is perpetual and will help you tremendously is because in uh, the, I'm going to use the big word, discrete, there's a discrete and distinct interval between uh, in a major chord, you play a note and you go up four half steps, and that's to the third, and then you go up, play a note, and then you go up three half steps. So it's four and three half steps between the notes. In a minor chord, it's three half steps and four half steps, four on the bottom and three on the top. Just telling you there's a factual basis to this. The point, though, is there is a exact mathematical relation between those notes, and your ear can hear it. So your ear can hear uh, any chord I play. Anybody, everybody listening to me can hear this and go like, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it, not to skip. Oh, same thing. And let's do this. Uh, so your ear can filter out uh, through those chords notes what, which one of those is the root, the anchor. Now, if you're, this will be helpful if you're playing on a, um, you can play an instrument like the piano, the guitar, or whatever. Uh, that is, you know you're playing an A minor. Uh, and then, but it doesn't mean you can sing it. it. doesn't mean you hear it. It just means you're, you can play any minor. So play A minor. Try to sing. Here's A minor. So you play A minor. And you try to sing, he goes, ah, sounds pretty good. Da, and you go, and you play an A. Da, nope. Da, 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 da. Nope. Ba. Until, so you can find what that note is. And when you can hear half steps, when you can hear difference in major minor chords, when you can hear the roots of chords, then you can start listening to your songs and you can sing like bum 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 da 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 and you couple that with I understand one two three four four five one one two three four five bum 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 one two three four bum 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 and then bum one two three four five you couple that with your uh, I'm sorry you couple the fact that you can look at that and say, oh, that's a, that's a, it, it goes to the one, then it goes to the four, it goes to the five. You're looking at a piece of music, it says C, F, G, and then you say, oh, I can learn how that sounds. Ba, ba, you play it, you go ba. Ba, 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 and you start understanding. I'm hearing one, four, five, and, and so, now I'm playing a song and I can recognize that. Oh, that's the same as to put in another key. So, um, there you go. That's a good start. All right, I am done. Thank you so much for being here. And um, so, as always, uh, if you want more in or information about, you want more information, uh, email me at mark at dallasmusiclessons.com. And if you want information about lessons, you can do that, mark at dallasmusiclessons.com, or you can go to my website, dallasmusiclessons.com. And as always, I want you to have fun and be awesome. So have a great week, and uh, I'll see you next week. And if I can find out how, I'm going to turn this off. Watch me. Here I go. It's going to happen. Okay, see you next week.